These animals are part of the national patrimony. They are Singapore's treasures. And surveys like this help people be more aware what treasures their waters possess. And so if we know what we have, then we can value it even more. JC Mendoza is a marine biologist on a mission. Along with 40 other scientific colleagues from across the globe, he's taking part in a unique survey of marine life designed to discover the real price of progress. Their target, the waters surrounding the tiny island nation of Singapore. JC loves this place, a passion he developed as a little boy and turned into a career. When I was young, I, I grew up in the Philippines and uh, my dad and my grandfather were both uh, civil engineers and they would be out in the field a lot because they were constructing roads and bridges and stuff like that. And every now and then they would take me out with them and while we are outside, you know, experiencing nature, they point out certain animals or trees to me and give me their names. So I guess that's where it started. Tiny. Tiny crab. Okay. I'll put it in the container maybe? Yeah. But it's also here that has experienced the most from the rapid pace of development. In its 50-year history, Singapore has driven rates of urbanization the envy of the Western world. In the process, more than 200 square kilometers of land has been dredged from the ocean and reclaimed, and the world has seen the creation of one of its biggest and busiest ports. The big question is how much of a toll has that had on Mother Nature? A large part of the answer lies below the surface, and JC, with help from scientists like Professor Charles Messing, are trying to determine what's been affected and by how much. We've been dredging for a couple of weeks and bringing up some specimens, and they're all chewed up in the rocks and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go down into fairly deep water, maybe 15 meters or so, and uh, try to find the same animals alive, intact, and bring them up so I can study them more easily. Professor Messing is used to working off the Florida coast. His speciality is the tiny sea creature known as feather stars. This is the center of biodiversity in the tropical oceans of the world. So on a single reef in Singapore, which is right on the edge of it, I can find 15 or 20 species of feather stars. There aren't 15 or 20 species of feather stars in shallow water throughout the entire Western Atlantic Ocean. So this is where it's happening. This is where we come to look at diversity. And today, in the midst of a commercially busy shipping channel, some surprisingly good visibility yields very positive results for the diving team. So I got down to the bottom in about 17 meters, which was deeper than I expected to go. But there were a lot of uh, soft corals, a lot of sea whips and beautiful white uh, sea fans. Then I gradually moved up and there were larger numbers of crinoids than I'd seen on any dive before. One discovery that surprised even the veteran professor. This, I don't know how well you can see it through the bag, but this is an example of the first species that was ever collected uh, from Singapore waters in the middle of the 19th century. And so it's nice to know it's still here. Perhaps the other surprise is the source of the funds behind this scientific expedition. Energy company Shell was the first to sign up to back the initiative three years ago. With countless operations in the region, it recognizes the need to be proactive in understanding and protecting the environment as well as drawing from it. When we build a plant, when we take cooling water, when we discharge water back into the sea, um, all these do impact on marine life. By understanding the, the needs of the uh, organisms and the marine life that live in the sea, we'd be better able to tailor our operations to make sure that we have uh, as little negative impact of the existence. It's not very common in Southeast Asia for these sort of concerted efforts, um, you know, because it requires a lot of funding, requires a lot of manpower, a lot of logistics. So this is one of the rare ones, you know, in the region and definitely in the world. So that's, it's, it's really, really exciting. For these scientists, the excitement is also about the future. 
This survey is not just collecting species, it's also preserving them. Each specimen collected is recorded and its DNA is stored in cryogenic freezing units, storing samples at minus 170 degrees for up to 50 years. The idea is to set up a tissue bank for future molecular work because at the moment, molecular work may be a little bit expensive with people, especially next generation sequencing costs a few thousand dollars per sample. But in the next two years, the price may go down drastically. There has never been such a systematic survey of marine life in these waters. Hopefully, as well as plugging a much needed knowledge gap, it will also allow industry and science to better understand how conservation and development can coexist. We do need development because that leads to a better life for people, but in doing so, we need to be responsible. I guess you have to have this um, passion, this sense of mission, that, uh, you know, you're one of the good guys. You're, you're documenting life on this planet in the hope that you will uh, help inform, if not this present generation, then the generations to come.